The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 16, NASDAQ off 17, S&Ps off 6. Gold contract up 1020, trading at 14.63 an ounce. You got silver up 16 cents, 16 dollars 85 cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up 28 cents, 57 dollars 8 cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the 10 year up 10 ticks, 128.27, 30 up 20 at 157.19. Both notes and bonds, folks, uh, they get some juice behind them. There's already 700,000 um, contracts inside the 10. King dollar, king dollar down uh, 10 ticks, trading 98.299. The euro is at 110. The yen is at 108.74, and the pound's at 128 to 1 U.S. dollar. So, Tom, we have the futures down 6. The futures were down 14, and then yeah. Powell came out while they released his testimony, and he says everything is basically appropriate. That's the headline, man. 10 S&P points. Boom. Shook it off. We might have record highs by the time we're uh, shook, done with this program again. Shook it off. That's no, right. No doubt about it. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Think of Swim as I do each and every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, if you haven't test-driven yet, the Think of Swim platform, real easy to do. As you're at our website at TFNN, just hit the Think of Swim banner, bring it up. They'll allow you to trade with paper money each and every trading day. If you want to understand options, option strategies, futures, outstanding program. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. How you guys doing? Good morning, Kevin. I, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> they, you know, and inside the trading room this morning, Kevin. Right? You know, futures are down 13, yeah. and a couple of the tigers and tigresses. They're saying, you know what? I can just smell 3100 again. <laughs> and, as, and as soon as the the transcript come out, evidently of Powell, boom, 12, uh, 11 S and P points in about a second. So, and remember, for traders, when you're bullish. And the market opens down like it did this morning and like it traded all night, you know, overnight. Buying the opening dip is easy. Right? Yeah. That's an easy trade to justify for traders. So if they rally from there, which they have, that's a pretty easy day for a lot of people. But I thought some of the interesting action this morning was watching CPI come out. And, you know, my first reaction when you see a point four in CPI is good night bonds, right? Bonds are going to break lower, but they rallied. Why did they do that? Well, it look, when you dive into the number on CPI, 3.7% rise in gasoline prices, right? 27 for the whole energy complex. That was more than half that number. So if you take out energy, which the core does, this number was just okay. It was in line, and it was nothing special. So that's why bonds are firm with a CPI number that you would think maybe was a little on the warm side, but take out gas, and it wasn't so warm. Yeah, interesting. You know, and I heard this discussion yesterday, you know, about the aspect of, you know, basically gas. Is, well, they take out gas, and they take out uh, energy. Well, energy and energy and food, right? And, you know, the, the analyst is saying, well, hey, listen, man, that, that's great, but the reality is that's what everyone needs. But then they're really explaining that, listen, vo that's volatility back and forth over the you know, longer run, whether it's three or four or five months, that basically settles itself out. So, you know, we, we can see um, how that shakes out. What's going to be really intriguing here, Kevin, is that, I mean, we know bonds got hammered. And... What they didn't do, though, is they didn't get under their breakout area from August, that monster day in August. So it's like, you know, after so many years of this happening, each and every time it seems when they get hammered, but they don't basically go back to where they really exploded topside again. It's like, okay, man, are you going to go for it again? And if, if they do, it's like, why? But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that shakes out. But, I mean, the, the good news is, we have a lot more economic data coming out the next two days. 
right? We got PPI tomorrow. We got retail sales and industrial production on Friday. So a nice heavy week of data. Not only, you know, today we have Walmart's earnings after the bell. That'll be a, oh. that'll be a big number. Yeah. Today. That that we'll deal with on fast market, and we'll look we'll look at this. Walmart's going to take up a lot of the oxygen around this market today. Discussions about how to trade Walmart. Oh, there's no doubt about that, man. That's I mean because they have so many cylinders simultaneously going, right? I mean, you know, the, the bottom line is is that you know you not only got the largest grocery chain in the world, um, you know, their online presence is basically accelerating. And right, and that's what. You just touched on exactly what the number one thing everyone's going to be looking at is the growth of e-commerce, right? Mark Laurie, their head of the U.S. e-commerce, he's the man on the hot seat here. He's got to keep e-commerce growing because any miss in e-commerce, and no matter what they earn, and you know the revenues on Walmart are massive, right? But if they miss on e-commerce growth, the stock will be soft for sure. Right. Now, that Mark Loring, he's, is he the same guy that had Jet and then they brought him in? Or, right. And when they purchased yeah, Jet.com, right. he came to Walmart and he's head of U.S. e-commerce. And his role is vital in yeah. this company because that e-commerce segment is really the way Walmart gets graded now on their earnings report. Yeah. The growth of e-commerce. We right. know they can... They can get it done in their retail stores, right? Can they start getting it done and competing with Amazon online? That's what the right. market really wants to figure out. And, you know, guess what? When you look at the amount of shoppers that Walmart has, and they all have phones, <laughs> the bottom line is that you start getting them used to those phones and ordering, you're talking about a whole different number. You know, it's remarkable. I was in a Sam's Club. Sam's Club. You know, they just have so much business, man, on Sunday. Just packed house, man. People, I was there at 5 o'clock on Sunday, Kevin. I think they close at maybe 6 o'clock. And, you know, to get out just like a Costco, right, they kind of like, they check your receipt because they got no yeah. bags, right? They check, And there's a line of people just waiting to get out of the door that have already paid with their shopping carts full of items. So uh, it's, it's just remarkable how much you business. Know, and, and everyone thought when this whole war started that Costco would be the most competitive with Amazon because of the membership fee. Right, and how they can do it. But it really, it turns out that it's Walmart that's yeah, most yeah. competitive because of the, the, how big they are and their ability to just drive down margins and compete with Walmart, you know, with, uh, I'm sorry, with Amazon. So Walmart has been incredibly, uh, you know, strong and competitive with Amazon. In, in some ways, the most competitive, frankly. Yeah, there's no doubt. And listen, there's, there's plenty of folks that won't walk in on Walmart. Yep. But guess what? I can see the modern all day long. I mean, I, yeah. I yeah. you know, I remember, I, I like, I, you've heard it many times, fishing equipment. These things are so inexpensive. Like, it's like, man, you, 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 if you don't go to Walmart, it's stupid. And that's why I bring up Sam's, <laughs> you know I mean? because Sam's is great. They right. don't have the same type of, you know, aura that Walmart might. Right. You know, it's just great. Big box, you know, discounts. Yeah. they got Christmas stores already. The deal's going crazy out there. Yeah. yeah. And I'm a 58-year-old guy. And when I go in Walmart and I can notice that prices are cheaper, just the eyeball test, they're cheaper. I, that tells you something. And it's a it's a big cheaper too. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's, it's not it's it's noticeable. It yeah. is. It is. I don't know. Listen, folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, outstanding show. You want to understand option, option strategies, defined risk. Great program. Kevin, you have a great one, safe one. Of course, we look forward to the program in 45 minutes. He's getting ready. He's out there That's already. That's a beautiful thing. Thanks, Kevin. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a muddy weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. 
Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow Industrials down 11, NASDAQ up 15, S&P's up 5.5. And, and let's go over and take a look. We, you know, many folks know about this deal, okay? This is quite a deal. And it's Musk's solar deal has become the top threat to Tesla's future. Look at this, man. Yeah. Solar so, City. Pretty remarkable, right? So this deal taking place in 2016 was, uh, I believe, was Tesla purchasing Solar City, right? So yep. you had a controversy from the get-go for sure. They purchased the struggling solar sales and installation business that he co-founded with his cousin. With his cousin, so you have Elon testifying under oath here, and so he faced constant criticism right from the get-go. The move was called a cat cat catastrophe. I'll get it out for Tesla, a two billion plus bailout of a debt saddle company of which Musk himself was chairman and the largest shareholder. Not bad, right? You buy a mess of a company that you're the chairman and yeah. largest shareholder for two billion dollars. Despite plummeting sales and substantial layoffs in the solar division under Tesla after the merger, Musk has fervently defended the Solar City acquisition, once calling it blindingly obvious and a no-brainer. <laughs> but in a stunningly rare moment of contrition, Musk expressed regret over the decision at his deposition, part of a class action shareholder suit that's gained momentum in recent months. Quote, unquote, at the time I thought it made strategic sense for Tesla and Solar City to combine, hindsight's 2020, Musk said. If I could wind back the clock, you know, I would say I probably would have let Solar City execute by itself. And um, so 85% of shareholders approved the acquisition, had only their devout faith in Musk to go on when they voted three years ago this month. The CEO said a combined Tesla Solar City was always part of his master plan and would create a world, the world's first vertically integrated clean energy company. The hope was that customers, <clears throat> excuse me, would drive a Tesla, harvest the energy from Tesla solar panels, and charge it, and then tie the ecosystem together with the Powerwall home battery. But they got court filings unsealed this fall, thousands of pages, internal emails, board minutes, presentations, and executive testimony reveal how truly dire the situation was behind the scenes with almost every significant promise Musk pitched publicly, either misleading or false. Man, right? you got to read the next, the, <coughs> the, next, me. the next sentence, folks, is the ultimate. Yeah, yeah. the documents in the lawsuit offer an unprecedented look at what happens when Musk's reality distortion field 
comes up against the reality of testifying under oath. Yeah. Tesla didn't respond to a request for comment on the suit. Yeah, I imagine not. Uh, and they get into even more, man, going down here, right? So from the outset, Musk's quest to buy Solar City was riddled with question marks. Had already bet Tesla on the Model 3, that $35,000 sedan. Was it really the right time to engage in distracting merger and acquisition gambit? Musk had said Solar City was on solid financial footing. I have to chuckle as you get that out. But internally, he wrote that the company needed to solve its quote unquote liquidity crisis. Solid financial footing and liquidity crisis are about as far away from each other as you right. can get. Uh, Solar City turned out hemorrhaging cash in danger of defaulting. And this is where really you get, you know, the board had balked. So did Evercore, one of its banks. And I'm just going to slide down because the conflicts are just jarring here, man. Besides his cousins, were running it. Its board and Tesla's had complicated overlaps. Six of Tesla's seven directors were Musk associates, including his brother, with Solar City ties. Wow. Antonio Gracias was on the board of both companies. What's more, and this is where it's remarkable, Musk had used his other entities to raise capital for Solar City. SpaceX, for example, had purchased a quarter billion dollars of Solar City bonds. Musk bought $65 million worth. Tesla's directors had to grapple with this apparent self-dealing as Musk pushed them to reconsider the acquisition in May. Musk said he recused himself from these deliberations, but court filings indicate he remained actively involved, even advocating for the move directly with bankers and investors. And, um, you know, he came up with the concept of a solar roof that resembled the traditional roof. Man, oh, man. <coughs> Excuse Pretty, me. Pretty intense, man. Yeah, There's no doubt. I, I said to you during the break when we reading this, conflicts of interest in anything people should be very, very hyper aware of because um, even if the person is doing their best to separate themselves, you can't. That's the nature of a conflict of interest. That's why even Supreme Court justices have to recuse themselves. Right. Get a little frog in my throat here. Go for it. <laughs> 877-927-6648. Um, you get the, uh, look at this, you get, you get a flat market. That's the real bottom line. <coughs> Pretty wild. Excuse me. Uh, let's get over and look at the gold market, though. So what, what we did do is that you get a good little bid happening in gold right now, uh, particularly from going from last night to uh, today. Yeah, I think 1446, uh, I think, was the low yesterday. Yeah, so gold's got to get back inside, uh, well, right there. It had 1465. Okay. Actually, even 1470, you know. 14.7, I'd feel better about September 30th, huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that would, you know, climb it back up into the higher range. If we go into the GDX, the GDX was getting some nice juice <coughs> yesterday. Excuse me. As at a rejected lower price. And GDX is going to need a lot more volume right now, though. 5.3 million. And it's hard to tell. We're still early. There's no doubt about that. But I'd like to see that price spread wider. That's a small price spread. Only 16 cents. Uh, 26.70 to 26.86. Uh, but what I do expect we're going to see out here is that, you know, we're going to get more volatility uh, throughout the day because you get enough happening. Uh, what, do we? Powell, What's Powell going on said, today? Yeah, you get the impeachment hearings there going yeah. on right now. Yeah. And then Powell's at 11, right? Yes, yeah. Powell's at 11. Okay, so yeah. um, if we take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here, What's intriguing is that some of these stocks, I don't even know that are uh, higher volume. Well, Smile Direct, I do. That, that stock's just, <laughs> this is, uh, so watch this one, folks. These poor folks who ever bought this got slight, <coughs> slightly taken to the cleaners. So this is, um, you know, aligns, braces. Uh, this one public, I think, at 23 bucks. Yeah, $23. Uh, September of last year. That's this year. Oh, my God, September of the Otherwise known as two months ago. It is. Yeah. So you're going from $23 down to 922 And, yeah, this is... <laughs> Man, oh man! That's, and what do they? 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 Do they get? Can you go? Did they get a print uh, just before? Did they get a print? Of course they did. Twenty-three. Maybe I that see. means they traded there. I'm not sure. Maybe that's yeah, just they yeah. Need, they needed that print. All right. Interesting, man. Wow, that is one disaster. I find that's two months ago. Yes. Uh, and you were mentioning that you had looked into that. And the, I did. The institutional yeah. ownership. Yeah. Let's this look is at something this I talked about. Conflict of interest is always right. jarring. What well, this you could call a conflict of interest too. Nobody owns any shares. That's right. right. Here's the CEO, 37,000 shares. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> How's that? Chairman and CEO, 2014 to present. 
It just doesn't even make any sense. Do you know what I mean? September 16th, 2019. Now, can I just ask, what's the, what's the 87 million? This is, this is what's intriguing. I think what this is. Is that 31% of the company? That though? is. And I think what I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is that, let me just look at this again. Could, was is this, that his ownership? Was this a, let me see, issue info. No, this was, this was brought public by J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Citigroup. Sometimes when you see that... And just to be aware, yeah. the, the lockup is all the way through March. Um, so I've, God knows what's going to happen on look at that. March. Um, maybe we can... Can you go back into the institution? Yeah. What are like the, the um, top holders, right? Yeah, right. yeah it, and what it is is that it, it's a company. And, it's, it's, and I'm trying to figure out, did they go from one company to another? Okay, stay right there, folks. Yeah. Tommy and I come right back. Exactly. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And if you, if you stay with Smile Direct for a second, this is, you, you know, with the lesson you can get out of this one, folks, is if you have to work too hard to find I out was gonna who owns it. it. Yeah. Something's watch, going on. Watch this is, out. We, <laughs> we pulled these up enough on the program oh, it's that sad. it's not this complicated to right. figure out what insiders usually hold. Right. And this is usually um, the Cut screen. You know the deal. insiders holding, yeah. all right? And you can see the Katzman is the CEO. 
He says he's on 37,000 shares. Right. But what's interesting is when you click on him, uh, well, let's just go in PhD. Yeah, because you, you got to get the other company. There's, there's another company involved. That owns 37 um, million shares, and you got three Katzmans in it. And where, how do we get to that one? Um, I think we, we pulled up Katzman first. Which one? Where, how do we get, uh, um, let's I see. get, this is where we got lost that's even yeah, going no, down I'm the with, rabbit that's, hole. That's, that, exactly. So we pull him up. Okay, there we go. Yeah. And then. It's going to list his shares. Now this is where to start. Yeah. Right. So he's got 87 million pull, shares of this company. Uh, let's oh, no, see. I think another one. I think we want to. Mm -hmm. I know, right? Yeah. Let's see if we pull this up. Well, I tell you what. Let's go PHDC. We'll try yeah. one more time before. Insiders. Yeah, that's how we got it last time. Yeah. And then we click on. Katzman. No. No. Because they got it. That's what, there we go. There it is. Right. So this is what's interesting, right? You have this small direct class B LLC, right. of which he owns 31 percent. You click 87 on 87 million shares. You right. click on this, and we go into security ownership in this company. Okay, so there's his 31 percent. Katzman, Katzman, Katzman. Jordan, maybe that's his brother, yeah. maybe that's his cousin. You got Stephen Katzman down there. Right. So they own all of this company. And. When you go into the description of this company, which is interesting, it's an identical description of the company, $3.5 billion market cap, yet different smile direct unlisted. So right. you make your own choice whether you want to own that company. Yeah. 23 bucks <coughs> to $9 Man. and less uh, uh, 60 days, right? Pretty amazing, actually. It sure is. So we had uh, SW. SWKS, that they, let's see what they had to say. They came out with numbers last night. That's a big semiconductor company. Okay. Um, traded to 95.55 this morning. You're at 98.98. And... Uh, they're looking for a 5G boost ahead, even though they came out with some weak numbers, it seems. Okay. I saw that top. Yeah, everyone's looking for 5G. So here we go. First quarter revenue, 870 to 890. This is what they'll be looking for. The estimate was 871, so not bad. Fourth quarter, they came in at buck fifty-two versus a buck ninety-four, but the estimate was a buck fifty. And um they came in at eight twenty-seven revenue, so pretty close to in line, man. Yeah. That's down eighteen percent year yeah. over year. Though. Fourth quarter margins right on line, fifty point three versus fifty point three. Not bad margins, man. Fifty percent margins. I know. Intense, right? Yeah. A little bit higher expenses, though, fourth quarter. Research and development expenses, $106 million. Market was only looking for 94 Spend a little bit more money in R&D there. Maybe that's where, maybe they're spending that money on 5G. Yeah. You know, if we go back to uh, the Seoul City just for a second, because one of the targets is saying, anyway, now this is what's really wild. And Tesla assumed all the debt, which was trading for pennies on the dollar, the bond holes got bailed out. <laughs> yeah, and we just heard, right, that who owned those bonds? SpaceX. Right. Te Elon himself. Right. Yeah. Big money. Imagine doing one transaction, pulling in $300 million. That's where the conflicts are just, uh, yeah. you know, it's one thing if it's your own private companies, man, when you're playing with other people's money yeah. and you're bailing out companies you own personally. <laughs> yeah. So we go into uh, last night. You're going to see uh, Europe... You know, down slightly today. Last night, though, Hang Seng, you know, Hang Seng. Boy, Sang, it just gets worse and worse, man. They, listen, they got, I mean, I just can't the imagine. The university, I believe, uh, the school's closed over there today as well. Yeah. Um, I mean. It, and that that is only a sign that things are worsening, not getting better. Oh, yeah. And then, you you know, the students are many of the people, the ones protesting. Now they don't even have school to go to. That they're, When you combine that into things, one person was saying this morning, which is just not a good development, man, let alone the yeah. human harm going on. Right. And so, in the Hang Seng, bottom line is, you know, you're at 26570 The bottom of this deal is 24540 And I would say that things can get a lot worse. I really hope they don't, but don't think that this is, like, things getting bad over there. You I, know, that's the worry. Oh, there's no, there's no doubt. Man. Yeah. There's no doubt. And it, because I can't, I'm trying to figure out the, the way out for them, and there's not a way out. And that's what I kind of worry about right, as well. Because it's like, what? 
you know, Beijing is going to back down? I don't think so. No. You know? They don't want that to start happening in China. The last thing they want is totally. the Chinese citizens thinking that they can protest for their rights the way that the Hong Kong citizens are. Yeah. Be a whole different ball game. Yeah. Whole different ball game. Silver. Let's go take a look at the uh, silver market out here and silver right now. It's up 19 cents. Yeah, it's going to need a lot more than that. You know, after that downdraft, we need a nice big sign of strength. So 1694. It's trying to get back inside the range. We'll see what they can get back inside the range. We're going to have our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstack, coming up. And he's always up on a good day. You know, because he, we, we, we haven't, this pound and the, the euro, I mean, they just been laying there flat like nothing is ever going to happen. Yeah. You know? We got 30 days until the election over there, I think, right? Right. 30, 31, right. 32, December 14th. Is that what it is? December 12th? Somewhere right there. Yeah. And we bring that pound up. This thing is just laying there. We're at 110. I mean, that, that's the euro. Bring the pound up. Same time. Oh. You know, speaking of time flying, as you get, over, get on this, yeah. I heard somebody saying on Bloomberg this morning that... Uh, when Trump had come out originally saying we got this, the, the phase one deal done, he said, we'll have it in three weeks, four weeks, five weeks um, from then. And, and I think that was November, uh, excuse me, October like 11th or something. This coming Friday is five weeks from that day. So I wonder when the market, they're having a good discussion, starts to maybe worry about, you know. And I don't know why you wouldn't worry from day one with the verbose way that things get boasted from the White House. But uh, we're now at three, four, five weeks. Everything, two weeks, two weeks is getting done, man. Yeah. Infrastructure month coming in two weeks. And I, I anticipate that, that we may see some headwinds. We'll see. Yeah, and then the, the ad lib that was added, and if we don't get a deal, I'm going to go up on Ooh. the tariffs even more. Yeah, That's, yesterday, yeah. in terms of the question he took yeah. from the Economic Club in New yeah. York. Yep. So, an eco eagle. Let's take a look at eco eagle. This is uh, catching a bit out here. So that's up a buck forty-eight. That's something to keep your eye on. Um, not not to be able to buy it, but an eco eagle was the strongest equity on the last run up. Yeah. It tends to happen, you know, is that these can stay strong for two or three years on runs. You know what I mean? So we went from forty dollars in May up to. 64. Yeah. In August. Yeah. You know, big pullback came all the way back to 51. Uh, but it's on the run again. You know, and when these things get on the run, <laughs> you want to pay attention to them. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We're going to bring uh, our man, Mr. Teddy Cakes, that in. We are going to be talking currencies. Dow Industrials, Dow up down 14. NASDAQ off 17. SP's up 4.5. Gold's up 11.70. Notes and bonds still catching the bid. 10 years up 10. 30 is up 20. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's, Dow's flat. NASDAQ is down eight. S&P's off three and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, what's going on, brother? Good morning, guys. We've got some interesting uh, market swings going on in some of our Asian markets today, huh? Yes. Oof. There's, there's, there's no doubt, uh, you know, the, we're kind of laying there in the euro and the pound, but uh, there's no doubt that, you know, that, that yen, I mean, you know, as you were saying last week, it, it got over that 109.39, but it hasn't stayed, thank God. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, today they had the, uh, the Royal Bank of New Zealand that surprised everybody by not cutting rates a quarter point. Okay. So that pushed that market like a balloon underwater. It's kind of funny. The New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar looks just like the Hong Kong dollar, U.S. dollar, or the U.S. dollar, Hong Kong dollar trade, where it's just an explosion because they're buying dollars in Hong Kong right now. Interesting. If we were just talking about Hong so, Kong, man. That place is in trouble, man. I mean... They are. They yeah. are. It's, and the currencies, it's kind of funny. Like, I heard you guys saying how the euro and the pound are very quiet today. Um, and it's kind of funny because you really you have this situation where, um, you know, we have our, in the U.S., we have the impeachment procedure that's beginning right now. Everything's quiet, you know, and then we have the tariff thing that now is coming maybe on hold again. So that's doesn't seem to be phasing anything. But you have the New Zealand dollar that, that's exploding. Um, and you have the, uh, the U.S. dollar yen and the U.S. dollar Swiss that look like they're starting to get kind of heavy. And I think that they're going to start to point the way of the dollar as well. Yeah, no, I can see that. I can see that. The thing that's amazing, and you just brought it up, is that the market's shaking everything off, man. Do you know what I mean? It's just like the dog just shakes it off and says, okay, what? nothing else is new, man. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, and, and because we know what the election's in uh, a month, right? Sure. Over in Over Europe, there. right? Yeah. Yes, you in know? England. You'd think we'd see some movement out there, but I, but I can see the I, like the, I like the aspect when you're talking about that. It might be the the franc and the yen that basically tell us where this thing's going, man. Yeah. I, th I think so. And it really surprises me the most is, like, we have the, the British pound, which that market never really has a small range, even when it's boring and, and is slow. And the range has gotten so tight. And we have the euro, U.S. dollar. Like, how can the Swiss have more volatility than the euro, U.S. dollar? That just doesn't make, make any sense to me. Yeah. No, I'm with you. And with Teddy saying that, this is cool, folks. Because when you have anomalies like that, it's like you have to pay attention to them because that just doesn't stay there yeah. for a long period of no time. No way. Yeah, exactly. No, exactly. There's a volatility play coming up in the pound, and I think it's going to be to the upside. I think the dollar is going to finally have a nice little turnaround over the next couple of days. We have some big numbers. I think the CPI is not going to disappoint tomorrow, um, but we have Powell's speech also coming into this week. 
And then we also have the impeachment stuff. So I think the dollar, for, it's, it has no reason to rally right now, except for obviously currencies like the Hong Kong dollar or the Chinese yuan. You know, those are, there's a reason there. But then you look at some of your lesser majors. Um, you have the New Zealand dollar. This is a big paradigm shift for that currency. So this is probably more than a one-day rally. Then you have the Australian dollar. It looks like it may have bottomed because of this New Zealand dollar shift. So that's going to give that those bulls a little bit of a lift. You know, and then with the yen right now, if that's, you know, rallying and the dollar is falling apart against that market, well, I think the dollar index as a whole is going to probably start to leak out a little bit over the next couple sessions. Yeah, I just brought up that Australian dollar. So this thing, you know, what's amazing is that, boy, if you, if you live in some of these uh, other countries that your currency fluctuates a lot, man, you have absolutely have to be a currency expert, don't you? <laughs> You got to watch a lot of things, that's for sure. It seems it, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm just looking, you know, the, the Australian dollar, we got, what, 82 cents, you know, two years ago down to 68 cents, right? You know, I guess if you, if you don't, if you, if you do business out of the country, you definitely have to that's watch That's for sure. It. Yeah, you know, doing business in the country, a little, little bit different, but pretty, pretty mm -hmm. amazing watching how this whole thing is just shaking out. And then, you know, um, the Mexican peso, not that we, we're trading that, but it was intriguing yesterday that Mexican peso bottom line took off. Mm -hmm. And you talk about a range, man. I was looking at this range because the range is pretty amazing. So, I mean, it's, 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 keep going today, too. I mean, you know, yesterday we had a low of 1911 mm -hmm. at 1945. When you bring this back, it's like, man, this, this is like a, a range bound deal that. Basically, like what, 21 to 18? And it's pretty much the range. I think it depends on when the vacationers are going and, and coming and going the most. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> no. You know what I mean? But I'll you're just, right. But the I'll... pace has been pretty much in a range now for a couple of years like that. Between Listen, 18 and we, have, we have listeners that are right on the border that live both places, and they seem to do, have done very well in, in the aspect if they can keep their eyes on the peso versus the dollar, you know, because the bottom line is that whether it's real estate, you know, uh, sure. Carlos, so, you no, know, definitely. going back and forth, you're talking about monster money when you, yeah. you know, got a, a move that's only two or three percent. But guess what? Two or three percent in the real estate market ends up being a big oh, number. Huge. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's actually a very good play for people who are looking to buy down there. Yes. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Mm -hmm. So. What do you think about this yen? I mean, it's still hanging up there. Do you think you get a shot that we get I, a, a stronger yen? No, I think, well, yeah, I think the yen can get stronger. Yeah, I think the U.S. dollar yen right now is definitely, it's going to start to be in a bear trend, I believe, for at least, I think, the next couple weeks, you know, especially because we don't have anything with the trade deal thing once again, you know, right. so I think that's going to start to thwart things with that. You know, it's going to start to make the, the yen stronger. And, the, and I think the dollar index is going to start to get heavy as well, especially if we do get a lift in the pound. Like the pound right now is wedging. It's going to either go up or it's going to go down, you know. And we could still see a correction down to a buck 26, but I don't think it's going to go lower than that. I think it's got a solid base and the bulls want to run with that one still. Yeah, it seems that the pound definitely wants any kind of deal done. I, that's that's. It seems like every time they're close to a deal, whatever that deal is, the pound wants to run, and it runs pretty good. Strong, meaning mm -hmm. get, getting strong, you know. So we're in like three years of uncertainty, right. which yeah. is remarkable. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a little bit of clarity going on with the pound now. A little bit. Yeah. The pound's just saying, "Let me loose. I'm going to be fine." Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I. Right. You know, I, I. It's so strange that the pound is even at 128. Because, you know, over the course of years, you've always had, you know, 156. I remember when Pound was sure. 211. It was like, oh, my God, you go to London and, like, forget it. You're living in a shoebox. Sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sure. but you know who might be set up for a run, too? It's like, you guys got to think about this. What happens if they start to finally come to some little bit of a medium ground for the Brexit issue. And then we look at the, the numbers in Europe. You know, everyone's looking at a slowdown in Germany, but they equate that to the economy and the consumer base. What they're not equating it to is the fact that there's been a big turnover in the manufacturing industry, in, in uh, especially Germany and throughout the EU. Their transition to, like, electric cars to begin with, is they're losing employment because they don't need 
the cars are being made differently. There's not as many parts, there's not as many components, it's more modular, sure. even servicing. There's, there's a whole bunch of jobs now that are being displaced, and they have a lot of corners that they don't have to have. Oh, Listen, folks, Teddy, Take first care. off, thank you so much, man. You have a great one, safe one. We look forward to uh, speaking yeah. with you next uh, Wednesday. Okay, guys, have thank a good you. one. Thanks. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And folks, as you come over to our website at TFNN, right under Featured Content, our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, he's going to be doing a subscriber event webinar next a week from yesterday. Yeah, you got it, man. Six yeah. days from right now. Tuesday, November 19th, he'll be in there for 90 minutes. Comprehensive review of the Chapman Wave techniques and market outlook ahead for next year 2020 encourage everybody to come check it out you can sign up get a 30-day money-back guarantee basil's going to be talking about kind of how he selected some of the picks that he's had for winners this year the techniques whether it's moving averages rhythm of movement practical application of those and the uh, formation he looks at in particular how he's drafting his chapman wave notations and talking about different sectors and stocks that he's already looking at for the next year ahead. That will be archived. If you can't attend live, it'll be 90 minutes a week from yesterday, Tuesday night, 5 till 6.30. Check it out on the front page. New subscribers, 30-day money-back guarantee. And, of course, you can get access to his great newsletter 
updates every day, updates over the weekend, and you get five archive workshops in there as well. And market-wise, you get a flat market. I mean, the, the market is uh, basically shooking uh, everything off once again. The uh, uh, Let's go see inside the Dow Industrials what... Yeah, it, getting just, a little pop in the Dow, man. Yeah, Positive we're up, 20. We're up 20 in the Dow, so point-wise out here... Apple. Oh boy, Apple. Huh? Putting, oh no, oh, no. Boeing. Recalibrated. Look there we this. go. That's interesting. Boeing positive 16 points. Procter and Gamble 11. Apple 10. Big Mac 6. Nothing yeah. heavy. Yeah. Goldman um, negative 10. IBM negative 9. Dow negative uh, 8. S and P is now just down to one point at 3,091. I think we had a low of 3,074 or 76. We're solid half a percent off the lows already. Pretty wild. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Good up, man. Mr. Kevin Hanks, TD Ameritrade, coming up next. Then I'm Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Thanks man. I'm a little sick. We'll go. Yeah. Wow! Look at him, folks.